Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing some French country thrift flips using IOD. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. We're starting with this sweet little paper mache bunny. Now this isn't a thrifted find, but I thought that it was super cute and perfect for an Easter project. So to begin with, I'm mixing some buttercream chalk mineral paint by Dixie Bell with sea spray. This is a texture additive that you add to your paint. How much you add is up to you. The more you add, the thicker your texture. And it's very easy to use. You just dab it on and it gives you a beautiful textured finish. So while this isn't a thrifted find, I thought this was something great to show you guys because often we do come across little animal figurines and this is a really easy way to update them and give them a nice makeover depending on what your style is. We are going for obviously a French country look that is my favorite and I'm adding this texture because we're going for a bit of a weathered look. So I'm dabbing and stippling this on and as I'm doing this, it's creating small little peaks. Now, if you didn't want that look, if it was a little bit too rough for you, once you have actually added your product, you could go back in and you could actually flatten the peaks while the product is still wet or you could even take a little bit of sandpaper to knock down some of those peaks as well. I'm coming in now and I'm adding some more of that texture to the base as well and then I'm going to let this completely dry before the next step. Next, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Patina Paint. I'm using the iron color and this is going to give us a rust effect. So I'm going to stir the product really well and then I am going to use a small artist brush to dab the product onto my surface. Dabbing the product on creates texture and that's another reason why we used the sea spray because obviously rust isn't going to be flat and perfectly smooth. Rust actually often looks really crusty and to give it a more authentic look I do try and use sea spray and I also stipple my product on. There's no real right or wrong way to add this product. I'm just picking certain areas where I imagine uh, rust might accumulate, where moisture might fall, and I'm just adding it randomly. Now this is just the first coat. We're doing this first, then we let this dry, and then we are going to come back in with the same patina paint over the top of where we've already gone. Dixie Belle's Patina Paint range also comes in a bronze tone, which gives you a little bit of a blue patina and also a copper, which gives you more of a green look. Once my first coat has completely dried, I'm going to come back in with another coat and I'm adding more of that iron patina paint over the top of the areas that have already dried from my first coat. Now I'm going to do this relatively quickly because for the next step, I need this second coat to still be wet for my green activation spray to actually work and create the rust. So next I'm grabbing the green activation spray, I'm pouring it into a little container and then I am dabbing the product onto all of my wet iron patina paint and you can see there's bits dribbling down here and there, that doesn't matter, we can always wipe that back. You want to get a generous amount of that green spray onto your patina paint. So I keep saying green spray because it does come with a spray attachment, however I find that to be quite messy. I like to pour mine out, have more control and use a brush instead. So after about an hour, that beautiful rust has started to show and it will continue to develop. Now I'm coming in with some more of that buttercream and I'm just dabbing and stippling around the edges of the rust. I just wanna tone it down just a little bit and I think that this sort of blends it a bit better with the rest of the bunny instead of it being very obvious spots and splotches. So this is going to sort of get it to blend in. And here's our finished rustic bunny. I'm really happy with how this sweet little bunny turned out. The Dixie Belle Patina products are a lot of fun to use and you could hardly believe that this was paper mache before. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. 
My second project today is this silver tray that I've already sprayed with Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer to prep it for paint. And I'm going to come in now with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. The chalk paint makes it a lot easier for my paint to stick to the surface. And I know I'm going to have some people upset that I painted this, but trust me, this was not a collector's item. It was scratched up and it was $2 at the thrift store. We're going to give it new life. I've done two coats of buttercream and now I'm going to use IOD's Melange Paint Inlay. We're going to be cutting out this beautiful floral design here and I'm also going to cut out a little bit of text to use down the bottom. Next I'm going to apply a nice even coat of the buttercream chalk mineral paint. When you are using paint inlays you need to apply them to wet paint. I've already done a lot of videos on this so for my lovely regular viewers I hope you're not sick of these yet. I just have so much fun using them. So I'm applying a generous coat here. I want to make sure I've got enough that my paint inlay will have something to grip onto and then I'm going to grab my paint inlay and press it design side down into my wet paint that grid should be facing up at you. I'm going to very gently add some pressure and smooth out my design. Once the first inlay is down, I'm adding that little bit of text down the bottom. I'm then going to grab my water mister and I'm going to thoroughly mist the inlay. This water is going to help activate the paint and get the whole process going. And then I'm going to grab a damp cloth to apply a little bit more pressure, make sure all of my inlay is making good contact with my paint. I'm just gently dabbing and you can also come in with a brayer for this step. After about 30 minutes, my inlay is dry. It will appear faded when it's ready. I'm going to use my mister to thoroughly dampen the inlay again. This is going to help it to be able to be released. I'm also using a cloth to dab off some of the excess. You wanna give it about 60 seconds before you actually start pulling the inlay away. So I'm going to find a little corner and start very gently removing the inlay. I'm gonna set this off once I've removed it off to the side to dry because I will get another one or two uses out of that. So I'm then going to repeat the same steps for the inlay up the top, finding a little corner, and then very gently and slowly pulling the inlay away. If you are new to inlays, the Melange paint inlay that we're using today is a great one to start off with because there's lots of beautiful little images like this for you to get started. When your inlay is dry, it's best to seal it with a spray sealer as brushing on a sealer can cause it to smudge. So I've sealed this up with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze and I'm paying particular attention to the border, wiping off a lot of the excess in the center and allowing it to sit in some of the cracks around the outside so that it adds some age. Finally, I'm going to add a little bit of Dixie Belle's bronze gilding wax around the outside. And here's our finished French country tray. I love how this turned out. I can definitely see it on someone's coffee table or sitting up on a shelf looking beautiful. These inlays are amazing. You really can transform something plain into something beautiful. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our third project today is this little wooden bucket that I picked up for $3 at the thrift store. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Silk Mineral Paint Sunkissed and I'm going to apply a thick coat. This is going to be my only coat, but I'm not being careful to get full coverage. I actually want a lot of that wood showing through to give this a really aged appearance. I'm also working it, it around the top. I'm not worried about it going on the metal of the bucket. I actually want a little bit on there and I'm also going to paint the inside. Silk Mineral Paint is really great for those quick projects because it has a built-in stain blocker and a built-in top coat. Once my paint is dry, I'm coming in with a wet wipe and just chipping off some of the paint that's on that metal to give it a bit more of an authentic, chippy, weathered look. Mm -hmm. 
I'm then going to be using IOD's La Campaign stamp and I'm going to be using the smaller little sheep design. So I'm adding some of IOD's black permanent ink to the stamp. You could also use paint for this. Once I've got enough ink on the stamp, I'm going to very carefully position where I want it to go and then very carefully press it down. This is a curved surface, so I definitely need to take my time with this and be careful not to let it shift. So I've always got one hand holding the stamp in place and the other hand applying pressure where needed. Once I think I've got enough of the stamp down, I'm carefully pulling it away. I did miss a little bit of the ear, so I just carefully repositioned it and pressed it down. This isn't a perfect image because my paint is chippy, but I'm more than okay with that. And here's our finished bucket. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that that little sheep stamp is absolutely adorable. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project today is this little jug. Now, I didn't mind the pattern on it, but it was very, very chipped and discolored in places. So after priming it with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer, I'm applying several coats of Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint. It is a lovely bright white, and I wanna keep the inside the same color. So I tried to stay with a tone that was similar to that. I know I've done quite a few jugs lately, but honestly, they're one of my favorite things to do with stamps. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to be using IOD's Antiquities stamp. I'm specifically using the design that has the Gabrielle text and the lovely florals around it. So I've pulled it off the backing because we're working on a curved surface and I'm applying IOD's permanent black ink. When I've got enough of the ink on there, I'm just going to tidy up a couple of areas where I got a little bit of extra ink on there. And then I'm going to carefully position the jug so that it makes stamping it a little bit easier. And I'm going to carefully turn the stamp over, hover it over where I want it to go, and then very carefully press down. I'm starting in the center first, and then I'm going to carefully press it down on the bottom and then work my way on the sides and press it down on the top. You definitely need to take your time when you're working on a curved surface. This particular stamp had a few intricate design elements, so I did have to sort of isolate and press down certain areas more than others. Next, I'm going to use IOD's Vintage Textures stamp, specifically the Crackle stamp. I'm going to be using the IOD black ink again, and I'm just going to ink up a small little area, and I'm going to lay my jug down and randomly and lightly press the stamp against my little jug there. I love using this one on the jugs because it does add a little bit more authenticity. It definitely makes it look a little bit more weathered. Once my ink is dry, I'm going to seal the entire jug with Rust-Oleum's Clear Gloss Sealer. I like my ceramics to have a little bit of a shine. And here's our finished jug. I just love how you can take some paint and IOD stamps and completely transform something that was chipped and tired and turn it into something that someone would love to have in their homes. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it's inspired you to maybe give some of your items at home a makeover. Let me know what you think of today's projects in the comments. Let me know if you had a favorite. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up, comment and share it out to someone else that you think might enjoy it. If you enjoy thrift flips, make sure you check out my other playlists. I have lots of ideas and inspiration for your projects. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find all of the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.